What is going on guys, Jishin here from Seasonal Media. In today's episode, we're going to continue with the 280Z built by installing front lower control arms as well as tension rods up front by Silvermine Motors. So first of all, the reason why I want to install a control arm and tension rod up front in this car is because the cast and camber on this car from factory is basically impossible to adjust. I'm going to be installing coilovers on this car. Obviously, I'm running wider tires, wider rims. So I'm gonna be changing things up here and there on the suspension side of things. And I need as much adjustability as possible in order to keep driving fun of this car. I don't want the car to be all over the place simply because I want it to look good. I wanna keep the car looking good and functional at the same time. If you're familiar with these Z cars and the aftermarket industry, there are a lot of different companies offering different variations when it comes to control arms. But the reason why I went with Silvermine Motors was for one, it was one of the lightest options available coming in at 2.4 pounds. And for two, it was the most cost effective solution for me. With the adjustable tension rods, you are able to extend the tension rod by half inch or go shorter by half inch. So you have an inch of adjustability, which allows you to dial in up to positive six degrees of cast up front. My target is about three to four degrees for aggressive street riding, maybe some light track days. So this would be perfect for my setup. So in summary, by installing adjustable control arms and tension rods, you're able to, for one, increase that adjustability of camber and caster. For two, you have these adjustability on the fly, on the vehicle, as long as you have access to the rods under the vehicle, I'll show you that in a second. You don't need to remove the control arms or drop the tension rods in order to adjust the lens. You can simply go under the car and crank it open and close. You're also increasing the strength and responsiveness of the front end of the car by uh, running more durable material as well as by replacing these rubber bushings with a spherical solid bushings which I will show you just in a second as I lift up the car. All right, now the car is jacked up, wheels off. I'm gonna show you how everything is installed and what it looks like. So over here, we got the tension rod. Nice beefy piece that completely replaces your stock tension rod. Now, this piece has spherical bushing on the chassis side, as opposed to this wobbly, old worn out rubber piece. So right there and then is a, already a huge improvement because now you don't have this bushing that's wobbling around here in the corners. And on the suspension side, it's just two bolts that gets mounted from under the car. Now we're looking at the control arm. On the inside, you can see again that it's a spherical bushing, all solid instead of this rubber mount that came off the car. And uh, coming in, you got the locking nut inside and outside for on the fly, on the vehicle, adjustability for camber. Coming over here is a nice machine metal piece which is going to get mounted to your ball joint into your suspension system. Because one side is counterclockwise thread and the other side is a traditional clockwise thread, you can simply twist this to expand the lower control arm or contract the lower control arm on the fly. So you don't have to unbolt any of this stuff like a traditional car you would. And same thing on the caster side, on the fly adjustment. This is why I love aftermarket control arm kits. This makes your life so much easier, especially if you're racing the car. Now, one thing you have to remember to get is longer bolt on the stock control arm setup. It is super skinny. Uh, as opposed to the new control arm, which is like much beefier, much thicker, which means you need to get longer bolts inside and outside. Got the longer bolts inside and outside. 
two on each side so four total control arm and tension rod insulation is very simple there isn't that much going on really you know you got one bolt attaching the uh, tension rod to the vehicle two bolts connecting the tension rod to the wheel bearing area and you got the control arm one rod coming in connecting it to the chassis and four bolts connecting it together and then you got one bolt that goes to the end link for the sway bar attachment which is always kind of a pain yeah this is the same issue with my evo with my rx7 and any other car i've worked in the past installing the sway bar is going to be difficult if you don't have pressure applied to the suspension system so what i ended up doing was actually removing the sway bar off the car uh, hooked up the end links into the control arm and then jacked up the sway bar back into the chassis i found that to be the best and easiest way to install the uh, sway bar back in the car so that is it for tension rod and control arm installation it's a quite easy installation procedure there's no instruction manual needed for this type of install overall i'm very happy with the quality of these parts the ease of insulation everything went smooth i just can't wait to get the car aligned because right now the car is like this when i'm going straight and it's just all over the place it shouldn't behave like that it is a corner focused vehicle so uh, as for the suspension side of things i'm going to be installing coilovers when it comes in I want to do uh, rear lower control arms as well so I can adjust again the uh, caster camber in the back of the car as well and that should be it for now in terms of suspension upgrades if you like the video please hit the like button if you haven't subscribed yet please hit the subscribe button and thanks again to Silvermine Motors for creating such a beautiful quality piece and for affordable pricing on your products